else is coming anyway. Hey, good morning. Can everybody hear me? Maybe, possibly. Cool. I'm glad, I'm glad you all survived Stack City last night. I, I can't see really what's going on out there, so I'm gonna assume that the whole room is full of people who passed out here thinking it was their hotel and just haven't left yet. So hey, my name's Kevin. I work for Cisco. Um, and today we're gonna talk about migrating NovaNet to Neutron. Uh, this is something that we did um, and are working towards doing in production as well. Um, we've done it in the labs. And uh, so far it's worked pretty well. Um, not much tenant downtime, uh, if any at all. Um, but we'll get to that in just a minute. So why would you wanna do this? Uh, if you're running NovaNet, chances are at this point you you know, there's still something that you that you want about it. Um, it's stable, but you know, it's, it, la it lacks a lot of the advanced features uh, that Neutron has, and so a lot of people are trying to move towards that. Um, as a community, we're trying to deprecate it, uh, but it just won't die, it won't go away. Um, I, th I think it was actually deprecated once, and then they undeprecated it because there were still enough people using it, like way back in Grizzly or Folsom or something back there. Um, it's more difficult to find help when you need it because, again, nobody's running it except you. Uh, so you go to ask somebody else and they're like, I don't know, man, I haven't used that in forever. Uh, actually, I sort of came into this project as, as an aside and that was, I spent probably two or three weeks just getting back up to speed on it because it had been so long since I'd used it. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, most of the cool things are in Neutron anyway, back to uh, lacking the advanced features. So you really want to be there. Um, I love the idea of greenfielding things and just maybe letting NovaNet die on the vine, but unfortunately that's not always an option. And who doesn't love brownfield migrations? So that's another reason why you might wanna do this, just because it's a lot of fun. So what I'm going for here is, you know, I think there's not, nobody's scenario is gonna be exactly the same. Everybody's got different things set up in different ways. And so this is sort of like a talk about what we did and hopefully it spurs some ideas if you're in, I assume if you're here, you're in a boat where this is something that you might wanna be doing. So um, kind of get started. This is, this is what worked for me. So like I had to determine my scenario. What does is, what is my environment look like? Where am I gonna go next? Um, and then I documented all the use cases. You know, you have floating IPs. Do you not have floating IPs? Do you have like a flat tenant network? Or do you have, um, you know, per, per tenant networks or something like that? Um, so uh, I defined my beginning state, so I looked at everything that I had and I said, well, this is how this, is how this looks. Uh, then I was able to replicate that in the labs and get everything set up uh, exactly how it looks um, for in the, in, the, in the eventual production state. Uh, and then I defined what I wanted it to look like. Um, so now I knew where I was and where I was going. And then, you know, the shortest way between two points is a line. So we went from A to B. Uh, and that was basically developing a bunch of code. So for me, what it looked like was, I, did a, I started with Googling, um, where every good project starts. And then um, when that didn't turn up a lot, because refer back to nobody's running NovaNet anymore except for you, uh, I asked the ops mailing list, and I managed to find some obscure GitHub, uh, somebody who had done something similar. And so we went ahead and, um, and so I went ahead and looked at that. Uh, and it looked like it could do what I wanted, so I forked it, and then it became this code here, which is this ice house tree. Uh, that code was originally set to work in Juno, possibly Kilo, so it had some issues, like they were missing um, dependencies and whatever else, like some, like some Oslo classes had changed and stuff like that. Uh, so some imports weren't quite right. So I had to change it, uh, but it also was set up for a very specific scenario. Again, back to that's what's gonna happen. If you guys go and try to do this, your scenario is probably gonna be different than mine. Uh, so feel free to take my code, uh, hack it up, fork it, whatever you need to do. Finally, once I'd gotten everything set up and working, I automated it. Um, I have this repo of OpenStack tools that I've been working on since like 2011, so some stuff is really old, but feel free to pop that out, look in the Ansible directory, there's a lot of goodies in there. Um, most notably, the plays that I'll show you later in, in, the, in the video. So our specific scenario, we were using Linux Bridge for layer two. Uh, we had non-overlapping tenant networks, so every tenant had like a slash 24 or 23 or whatever they had, uh, which is you know standard for NovaNet. You can't have overlapping subnets in NovaNet, which is one of the cool features of Neutron you probably want. Uh, we used, in this current situation, we used a hardware gateway for, uh, for layer three, which means that there's like a CSR or 
you know, whatever else upstream. And I don't really have to worry, per, in this migration, I didn't have to worry about the layer three aspect of it. So I wasn't trying to move floating IPs around. I wasn't trying to do anything like that. Um, we're working on a procedure because we do have some situations where there's software layer three, uh, and that will definitely incur some additional downtime, uh, just because if nothing else, like you have the art problem where you're switching an IP from this device to that device or whatever the case may be. So if the MAC address changes at all, you know, that's gonna be an issue. So um, something to keep in mind, but for this particular scenario, hardware layer three, which made my life a lot easier. Um, so a high level look at the procedure. The first thing you have to do is block client API access. This is very, very important. Uh, we still need the APIs for the stuff we're gonna do. Uh, I tried to defer to the APIs as much as possible because I figure Nova and Neutron know how to set things up far better than I do. I don't wanna be manipulating databases directly if I don't have to and praying that I got all of the all of the joins right and all, <laughs> all of the whatever else is correct. So, um, but you don't want tenants changing things while you're trying to migrate. So you need to block client API access. So that is a caveat I should point out is that there's a con not a control plane outage, but you, tenants can no longer make API calls during the time of the migration. Their VMs will still work. They can you know, still interconnectivity between the VMs, upstream connectivity through the hardware gateway all works. They just can't make API calls, can't launch new VMs, delete them, whatever. Um, then we gather up all the info we need from NovaNet. Uh, this is because there's the network cache stuff, and uh, if, if you're in the middle of something and like a bit of data expires, then you will find yourself in a bad place. So we take all that data, and that's stuff like the instance IDs, the MAC addresses, um, you know, the IP addresses, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we gather all that up. We install and we configure Neutron. Excuse me. We start Neutron services. Uh, you know, fire up the API, et cetera. Uh, then there's a bunch of scripts, which we'll get into, which create network subnets, ports, security groups, um, all that information that we pulled out of NovaNet, it basically replicates it in Neutron, which is, you know, running in parallel. At this point, NovaNet is still in charge of everything. Uh, in our situation, we wanted to make sure the DHCP servers stayed on the same IP addresses. I would recommend that. Um, you don't have to do it. What'll happen is normally when you spin up a DHCP server, in Neutron, it'll just pick you know, the first address available in the allocation pool, and, um, and then it'll just work. The problem with that is if it's not the same IP, a VM will go to renew, the I address won't be there, and then eventually it'll just do a full like release and renew cycle, but that oftentimes tears down the network stack and brings the network stack, the stack back up on the VM, which uh, could cause some problems for you. So I recommend trying to keep it on the same IP address. That's one of the things that we do. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, we attach the ports and basically, um, and I'll get into this again too, is that that just updates the port binding in the Neutron database. Uh, we don't actually want to attach the ports on the compute nodes, um, but again, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, rename the bridges and the interface on the computes to use Neutron vernacular. So, you know, you've got BR whatever, uh, VNet whatever, it needs to get changed to like BR UUID and, uh, you know, TAP UUID and that kind of stuff. Um, so again, it's like the, the idea that we're going for here is we're gonna yank the tablecloth out and uh, all of the things are still gonna be there, the table's still gonna be there, so when Neutron takes over, everything's as it expects. Uh, and then lastly, we clean up the NovaNet resources, get rid of all those old bridges and whatever else that we don't need anymore. So digging into that, that's like the quick high-level overview. So digging into that, uh, we start on the control nodes, um, and this is kind of a control nodes logical. We touched the compute nodes a little bit here, but um, everything comes out of configuration files. So uh, there's, well, two places. There's, we, we store some stuff in the database. Um, we create a, a transient table to do that. And then, um, but we, it's like just an any file for configuration, network configuration stuff for the migrations. So we create those and there's scripts in the directory to do all of that. So it pulls the information that it needs out of the database, out of your Nova Conf, out of your Neutron Conf. Um, and it writes all that information out into a configuration file. Um, and then we generate network data, and that, again, is what shoves the stuff into the database. Uh, again, that's a script that's as part of the NovaNet to Neutron code repo that I showed you earlier. Um, then you install all the Neutron packages. You sync the database, uh, which you know, just puts the schema in place. You set up IP tables. Um, in our case, that's, you know, we've got very specific firewall rules. 
So, and a lot of this will make sense when I'm gonna, I'm gonna show a video of me actually doing the migration later, and so you'll see all this stuff running in the plays. Uh, we update the Neutron and the Nova config files on the control nodes and on the compute nodes. Um, and again, that goes back to that port binding stuff. We have to update the compute nodes to use the fake compute driver, otherwise when we do the port attaches in Neutron, it will actually attach the ports, <laughs> which you don't wanna happen. That causes trouble for you. Not that I know from experience. Uh, so in our case, I leveraged our existing automation and config management to do a lot of that stuff. So like installing Neutron and putting the config files in place and stuff like that. Uh, we have a custom thing called Spine that we use. Um, but if you have Puppet, Chef, Ansible, whatever it is that you use. Um, I also wrote some Ansible plays to do this stuff, but I didn't include it because one, Spine does it for me. And two, that wouldn't really be useful for you guys anyway because this is our setup. Um, so however you do that, that's sort of a black box. There's this configure Neutron and get everything stood up properly, you know, mythical unicorn that you have to accomplish. So, and I did it using our existing stuff. Um, finally, you run the migrate control script, uh, the migrate security group script and the update DHCP server script. Um, and again, that like literally just makes Neutron API calls and says Neutron net create and it does all the things. Neutron subnet create, it attaches it properly. Neutron port create, Neutron port attach, all that stuff happens. So now, at this point, your database should look how it would look had you been running Neutron the whole time, but NovaNet is still in charge. Um, the it's worth pointing out that the security groups and the DHCP scripts, they actually have to manipulate the database directly. Um, just found that to be the easiest way to do it. Um, and it's a really, they're really simple calls. It's just create the things. Um, but it was far less efficient to do that. With, well, with the DHCP, it was, I couldn't do it at all from the API. With the security groups, it was way less efficient. So it just shoves that stuff into the database uh, and everything seems pretty happy. So when you get done with this page, like when you've done all the things on here, your control plane is up and running. You can run Neutron commands. You can run netlist. You can run subnetlist. All the things will show up and everything will look happy. Your VMs are still running because we haven't touched the compute nodes other than changing that config variable. Your VMs will still be running uh, attached to NovaNet bridges and all that sort of stuff, and your VMs will still be running at this point, and your network will still be up and working. Now we move to the compute nodes. Up until this point, everything you've done, you can undo without causing really any damage. Uh, we've only modified the Neutron database. Uh, we haven't done anything to uh, the compute nodes, again, other than changing that fake driver variable. Um, so everything up to this point is undoable. Even I, I've had to do, undo it a lot of different times. I just had a for loop that would go through and list the nets and subnets and all those things and just delete them. Um, once you start here, this is, when you're in, this is when you're on the dark side of the moon and you can't really come back <laughs> without causing a lot of trouble. So when we go to do the compute nodes, um, you know, as I said here and I mentioned earlier that the migrate control also issues port attach API commands and that's why we have to switch to the fake driver. And again, that just lets the Neutron ML2 agent set everything up in the database and make, all the, make everything connect properly. Um, so from its point of view, it actually is the one who attached the ports. That way we know it's just, it's just working well. Um, I tried this a lot of different ways and ultimately I came up with this idea that the compu every compute node needs to have its own individually configured file, um, config file. I'm, I'm sure there's another way you can do it where you, you, know, you add a tag in there and you know, the compute node figures out which things it needs. This is the way I decided to do it, it was just easier and I'm super lazy, so uh, it works great. But what that means is that we, we basically have to run it on the control node because we need Neutron config file, which hasn't been created yet. Uh, we need the Nova config file. We need to pull stuff out of the database. In our situation, the compute nodes are using conductors, so we don't have direct access to the database from the compute nodes. So on a control node, I run this generation script, and then I pull all the config files to each individual compute node, uh, so that way everything gets on there. Super happy. Um, I did it all in Ansible, so again, you'll see it when I run the video. It's, uh, it all happens just really quick and automatically. So um, then we run the migrate compute script, and now this is where the bridges and the VLANs and all those things actually switch over. Um, and I mean, it literally just issues IP commands, it issues vconfig commands, it issues uh, BR control commands, renames everything, and just that's where, that's where you're pulling the rug out. Um, 
And so then finally, the Novanet bridges are still going to be in place uh, because the Neutron ML2 agent is what created everything. So like the TAP devices are going to be Neutron. The VLANs are going to be Neutron. Uh, but you're still going to have the, the BR, you know, usually common vernacular is BR, and then VLAN is the name of the bridges that, uh, that Novanet creates. And so those are still going to be there with nothing on them. Um, and so we can just go through and remove that. So I have a script that does it. It's hit and miss, so sometimes I have to go through and, like, I, I wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally delete something that needs to be there still, so I made it safe, and it gets rid of the, the majority of all that old craft, and then I go through and clean everything up manually if there's anything left. So um, that gets us to the point. So, like, at this point, everything is actually done. Your control plane is under neutron control. If you're issuing commands, it's going to Neutron, and Neutron is talking to Nova. On the compute nodes, Nova has got, uh, it's, set up to use, it's set up to use Neutron as well, so it's gonna be using the Neutron ML2 agent. So at this point, everything you do is under Neutron control, you're basically done. So the last procedure is you make yourself a drink, because you deserve it. If you've gone through this, you have probably already started drinking, but I highly recommend you continue. So, all right, demo time. So what I'm gonna do here is I have about a 13 minute video. It's unedited with the exception of there's one point where our config management is running and it takes like 15 minutes and so I just sped it up. Uh, so it takes like 45 seconds instead of 15 minutes but otherwise the video is unedited uh, and it's just me doing the, it's just me doing the, doing the, uh, the migration. So stop me if you can't see this. Hopefully you can and I'll sort of walk through what's happening here. So you can see here that we run, you see all of the tenants are there. Uh, I'm gonna ping one of the VMs here, you know, just give it a couple of pings and you can see it's up there, it's running. So at this point, this is still NovaNet, nothing else has happened, we haven't really started doing anything. Ping another VM just because I'm thorough. And so then I'm gonna jump into this Ubuntu machine so Cirrus doesn't, uh, doesn't have screen installed and I just didn't wanna deal with trying to get it installed. So um, I spun up Ubuntu VM. Excuse me, I'll hop into a screen and um, I'm gonna ping 8888 from a screen. Uh, you can see that it's working there. So this VM is now going up through the hardware gateway and out to the internet. Uh, so that's all working. So we'll start it again. I'll detach the screen and I'm gonna leave that running the whole time. We'll come back to that later. That's a fun little, fun little surprise for later. So um, we'll look at our VMs again so I can get the IP addresses. I also can't type. You never feel more vulnerable than when your screen is on display for everybody and you're typing things wrong. So this, that screen down there is one of our control nodes. And so at one point during the control plane migration, you'll see that those pings will stop. Uh, and that's because that's when the VLANs get removed from the control plane. So there is a slight period of time where uh, the VMs won't be able to reach the control plane. The only time I really think that could be an issue is if you have really short DHCP leases, because uh, it might take more than a couple of minutes, depending on how long it takes for your, for your, your config stuff to run. So you can see what's happening over here in the Ansible plays. Uh, so the first thing I do is I clean up my Git environment to make sure that I'm pulling the latest stuff. Um, I check out the code. Uh, it runs create conf. Uh, you can see over there that uh, Neutron is not running. Um, I generate the network data. And so you can see the, the third or fourth task down there. It's running the generate network data stuff. You can see Nova Network is still running. Uh, Neutron was not running. I'll clear that screen. And I type dollar signs instead of ands. That's awesome. So this is, where, this is where our config management stuff is running, and so you'll see that those pings down below, they're gonna start speeding up. This is where I sped up the video. Uh, it goes from like 100 to maybe 800 or 900 pings. Um, so this is where you would have Puppet or Chef or Ansible or whatever thing you have. It's, putting, it's installing Neutron, it's putting the config files in place, it's you know, giving it all the correct value so it can talk to the database and, and, your, and your message bus and all that goodness, ah, oh, there we go, hey, it's done. If only it actually really ran that fast. Uh, so now the database is actually, uh, 
this is this is what actually instantiates the database. So we create it uh, and we stick the the schema in place. Um, we stop all of the services. Uh, this is because of the way that we use um, that we do high high availability. Um, basically, I'm trying to set things up how my config management system wants to see it. So I stop everything from running. Uh, I re-enable IP tables. I had to block it earlier so that um, so that stuff wouldn't get flushed and restarted. Um, so we wrote we um, we start the Neutron APIs. Uh, we load all of these all of these IP tables chains. Um, you can see down there restart Neutron uh, restart Neutron server rather. Um, so now you can see Neutron server is running, uh, but there's no endpoints created, and that's what's happening right now is that we're um, we're populating the Keystone data. So as soon as that finished, now you'll see Neutron netlist returns, but it's not returning anything because we haven't actually stuffed any values into it into the database. We haven't created networks or anything like that. Um, so we do lots of uh, we do lots of starting and stopping and restarting, and again, that's all just normalizing the system to be how our um, HA system would would want it to be set up. So um, you can see there the VMs are still active and running, everything is happy. So now we update the compute driver. So now we're doing stuff on the compute nodes. Um, we update the compute driver to the fake driver. That was what I was talking about. So we can issue the port attaches. Um, we fix permissions on directories. So now that playbook is completely done. And our control plane is prepped. All the config files are in place. Everything's written out to disk. Uh, the proper APIs are stopped and started. So one of the things you'll see here, and I think I call it out, is some of the, some of the VMs are changing to no state. Uh, eventually, that's going to happen to all of them. That's not a bad thing. Uh, basically, what is happening is there's no longer a valid compute driver. Uh, the fake driver doesn't return any information for the VMs that are running. And so it, um, and so the Nova, what gets the state of the VM in the API, or rather in the database, as returned by the API, just turns to no state. Uh, that'll turn back to running when we fix it later. So trust me, you're fine. Your VMs are still running. Do not panic. Don't forget to bring a towel. Um, so now we're actually running the control plane migration. Um, so we, again, we, we make sure that the config file is there, and that's just sort of a way to make sure that the code is checked out and that it's been created. Um, so we, you can see there I did the, there's the run migrate control, there's the uh, run migrate security groups, the run updates to the DHCP servers, and, um, and then we restart the DHCP agent, and then all of that finishes. And then at this point now, you've created all the networks, you've put the DHCP servers on the proper IP addresses, um, and then we revert the MHVs, which are what we call compute nodes, and that changes it back to the, to the real driver. Um, so now we're going down over here. You can see that when the VLANs got removed, those hosts became unreachable. Um, but now we're looking at, uh, you can see that the DHCP agent came up, the namespaces were created. Um, we'll jump into the, one of the namespaces, and you'll see that I can ping one of the VMs from this namespace. Um, showing there's connectivity now between the control plane, and at this point, your VMs have connectivity back to your DHCP servers. Uh, so fear not, you can renew your IP address, which is really important. So now at this point, this is where we finish that first, that first slide, the detailed procedure for, um, for completing the, uh, the, the control plane migration. So everything is back to normal. Um, in a second here, I'll go back over and you'll see that the no state is turning back to running. Um, eventually, they'll all change back to running as the actual real compute driver starts returning proper states. There you go, they're all back to running. So now we're gonna prep the compute node migration. So this is where we take, uh, where, we, where we put all of the neutron values in our nova.conf um, for our computes and actually switch the compute nodes over to be talking to Neutron. So um, you can see there, that's where we generated the files on that control thing, and then I copied them all. Um, we fetch them, and then I'm gonna copy them all to the correct compute node. Uh, so everything's gonna be in place, so when we actually run the migration, it'll have all the information that it needs. So copy them into place. Uh, then you can see back over there again, pings are still running, everything is still up, and, and uh, your network is, is pretty happy. So when we do a netlist over here, you'll see now the neutron nets are there, the ports are all there. Uh, so there's an, when we do the subnet list, you're gonna see, so what we did here is I created, we created a bunch of different allocation pools because there's no reserved IP 
uh, option in Neutron, whereas there is a NovaNet. Uh, and so some people have like a piece of hardware or something in their tenant space that they don't want that IP address to get assigned to a VM. So it's a little bit ugly uh, in, the, in the subnet list, but basically what that is is it created allocation pools that just surround any reserved IP addresses so Neutron can't assign anything. So now you can see over here we're on a, we're on a compute node and everything is set up uh, for NovaNet, like it's got the BR with the VLANs, and you can see like the, the VNet adapters and all those things. So then we run the compute migration. So this goes through it, make sure all the config files are in place, uh, and it actually runs the migrate compute. Now we jump back over, and you can see everything is switched. So no longer is it no longer is it under Neutron or sorry under NovaNet vernacular. And now everything is under Neutron. You can see the old NovaNet bridges are still there, but all of the the VLANs have been changed to Neutron stuff, all the tap devices are changed, all the bridges that are attached to the proper Neutron bridges and all that goodness. Um, so then we clean up the bridges. Uh, this is that step I said is kind of hit and miss. Uh, in this particular case, it gets all of them but one. Um, so now when we be our control, you can see we got rid of all of them except that one. Um, and that's mostly just to be safe. Just don't want to don't want to go through and accidentally blast something. We did such a great job of keeping all these VMs up. I don't want to <laughs> go through and accidentally take one down. Um, so at this point, you're basically done. Um, everything is under Neutron control. Um, everything is, is happy. NovaNet's not even running anymore. Its bridges have more or less all been deleted and destroyed. Um, we can see that everything still looks great. Uh, so all that IP information is being returned from the Neutron API now. It's not being returned from the NovaNet API. Um, and then as the coup d'etat, we'll jump back into this Ubuntu VM and we'll see how our ping to Google is doing. Spoiler alert, it's doing okay. So there it is, you can see it's still running, it's still pinging. When I stop it, you can see there were 1,602 packets transmitted and what is that, 1,600 received. So I dropped like two packets in the entire thing, uh, which is tantamount to 0% packet loss. Um, so then I, I take a little bit of time here and figure out how to create a new VM because I don't often launch VMs from the control from the CLI, so I, I had to like look up the commands. But we'll boot a VM, and we'll see that it comes up and that it works properly. Um, and again, at this point, everything is under Neutron control. So we're completely migrated, and the VMs had, as you could see, a modicum of downtime, if you could even call it that. Um, so at one point in here, when you go to, so like now that you've done this, you could, as we move forward with, with doing software layer three, we're going to, this, this would be the point where we would migrate floating IPs and stuff like that. Um, so it's kind of a building block approach, which is why we've only done the hardware gateway stuff so far. So we'll hop into one of the specific tenants you can see there. It's got two VMs running. And then I'll figure out what a Nova boot command looks like. And had I been less lazy, I would have edited this better for you to uh, not take a bunch of time doing that. You know, what can you do, right? <laughs> I had 40 minutes to fill and about 25 minutes of content, so <laughs> that's a joke. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so as we, as we move forward to do software layer three, this is where you would do that now, and you would, um, I'm starting to work on it. I haven't really come up with exactly what we're going to do yet, but I mean, it's going to be, procedurally, it's going to be a very similar thing where we take the information out of NovaNet, um, stuff it into Neutron, and start agents and whatever else needs to happen so that, um, so that the IPs move over. And then, again, you can prep everything ahead of time. The downtime I anticipate happening will be when you actually do the cutover and you know, like the switches are updating ARP or whatever. Um, so you can see over here, I'm slowly figuring out how to launch a VM, creating my security groups and all of that kind of fun stuff. And we'll just name it something that is obvious that it's a post migration VM booting. And hey, huzzah, that seemed to work, but does it actually plumb? Again, the spoiler alert is that yes, it does. Ah, I'm the worst. My kids hate me at Christmas. So you can see it came up there. Uh, it's active, it's running. It's got an IP address. Um, we can ping it, and it returns pings. 
Um, you can SSH to it if you uh, actually type the correct IP address. The first one will, I'm going to the wrong VM, so I get a key denied, but then I realize my mistake and fix it. Jump into the VM, and it can ping the world, and everything is happy. So now you have a situation where you were running NovaNet, now you're running Neutron. You can create VMs. Everything is happening the way you would expect it to happen. And your boss, hopefully, is going to give you a raise. That would be nice, wouldn't it? So that's it. That's how it happens. That's how it works. Are there any questions? And if you have questions, please go to the mics, because they're recording this. And I can't see if any. Oh, I think I see a silhouette. I have two questions, but the first one is just because I was five minutes late to the session. <laughs> sure. Um, the migrate control script that you talked about, uh -huh. is that something that's out and ready for people to use, or was this met as a, a proof of concept of a future thing? Yeah, so I'll make the slides available. Um, I've got a bunch of code repos in there with those Ansible plays, also with all of that NovaNet to Neutron migration stuff. Um, but the caveat that I gave at the beginning was that, I mean, you can probably use it. It should work, but you might have to modify it, because I originally found it somewhere, and it was for like Juno and Kilo, and I had to heavily modify it. But please, like, take it, actually I can go back to the, if you wanna take a picture of the, of the thing, there you go. So like those are kind of the repos where I pulled it from, uh, what I did, and then my Ansible stuff. So yeah, feel free to go for that, but I wouldn't recommend just running it. <laughs> You're probably gonna to wanna to look at it and make sure you understand what it's doing first. But I mean, you can hit me up on, on Twitter or whatever if you have questions, or I'm in IRC. And my other question, which might be out of scope, is that every time that I revisit the issue of migrating away from, from Nova Network, I'm told by Neutron people and also by the network guy at, at my work that, um, that Neutron doesn't support our current use case, which is having a single pool for all, um, all internal IPs. I think that it does. I would, we can probably talk about that more if you're interested. Like, I would have to understand more about your specific scenario. What, what, what did your Nova network topology look like? So we had, um, we had individual tenant nets, and obviously they're not overlapping. Um, but I know that NovaNet supports like the flat network model, like the quote unquote flat DHCP, I think right. is what it's called. Right. And I'm pretty sure you can do that same thing in Neutron. I haven't, so that's why I'm a little hesitant to say for sure, but I'm pretty sure you can. Okay, but there wasn't like a big announcement that now, this thing that didn't work before now suddenly works. Not or... that I'm aware of, no. Okay, all right, I'll have to research more. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Hey. Hi. In, uh, during your development cycle, how, many, how often, what percentage do you say that the DHCP servers changed IP addresses from what it was supposed to be? Um, almost every time. Um, and that's just because, again, it takes the first, especially after I implemented that, that um, uh, allocation pool stuff, because it goes into the database unordered, and so, and then the DHCP, ad, the DHCP agent just pulls the first available IP out, and so, especially after I did that, it would come out to like 154, like every time and stuff. So, I mean, it, it's, it's fairly repeatable, like you can see what it's gonna do and how it's gonna do it, but at the same time, when the data gets shoved into the database, that is, completely random, so, you know, um, yeah. So that, that's, that was why I just went ahead and did the way that I did it, and basically what happens is we, we literally just go and update the database, restart the agent, it tears down everything and brings it back up with the correct IP address, uh, and so I just found that to be a lot saner and safer. Yeah, it is, thanks. Um, you said this was an ice house, is the Neutron you're running still ice house as well? It is. Hey, and then when you... Oh, is it? Oh, I'm sorry, my mistake, yes, it's Juno Neutron. Yeah, no my mistake, thank you, Chet. And then when you switched, what, um, is there bugs that cropped up or, think, or bugs that got fixed or anything like that operationally that would be interesting between the two? You mean between Icehouse and Juno? No, between Nova Network and Neutron. Yeah, but I mean, more than anything, it's really just we're trying to normalize our systems so that we can, so that everything can do, because we have some deployments that are running neutron greenfielded, and some that now are obviously going to be brownfielded neutron. So that was really the biggest impetus for it, was to get everything flatlined. Um, and we also have tenants who just want to be running neutron for, you know, whatever other features it offers. So that was, that was the big thing. Uh, as far as bugs go, I mean, that's a whole other discussion. You know, why would you run NovaNet over Neutron or vice versa? Um, and I know that Chet would probably love to talk to you about that <laughs> as well. Right. Yeah. 
Right. Exactly. It's, I mean, it's the Windows versus Mac thing again, right? It's like, which one's better? It doesn't, uh, neither is better or worse. It's just, what's, what, what are you trying to accomplish and what's the best tool for the job? We started with Neutron. I was just curious to... Yeah, I'm sorry. So he said that they're ba it's basically apples and oranges, was what Chet was saying. Um, that, you know, but most importantly is if you're, running, if you're running NovaNet and you think you need to go to Neutron, don't just take someone's word for it. You should probably stand it up, greenfield it somewhere, make sure it does what you want it to do, and make sure that it does it like, you know, well or whatever, uh, and then make a decision if you actually want to be running Neutron over NovaNet. Um, but also keep in mind that, again, the community is sort of moving away from NovaNet, um, which a lot of people find to be an impetus, but we also will keep supporting it as long as we have to, but your support may be slightly diminished. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Sir. Uh, so you're, you were running Icehouse Nova Network with VLAN Manager and with an external Gateway L3 type setup? Correct, it was a hardware external Were you gateway. running multi-host with Nova Network? Uh, no. No, so you weren't doing the per Nova compute. Correct. Uh, natting and snatting and uh, DHCP. Correct. All that happened on the compute on the control nodes, and then we had uh, pacemaker running HA to manage all of the failover and whatnot. Are you aware of floating IP L L3 stuff aside? But at least on the uh, every Nova compute host and multi-host runs its own DHCP server and fakes out all using the same. Uh, dot one address in the gateway right. with EV tables rules and all that stuff, if that would migrate over? That's a really good question. I don't know. And so, so when you would migrate over, um, conceptually, the database in your new Neutron database would reuse all the dot one D, D, DNS mass server IP. Yeah, so that would. But you would have one kind of DHCP server hosts per network, per tenant network, I guess. Yes. So it's not that it wouldn't migrate over, it just would migrate over with different caveats and architecture, right? Yes. Yes, you could migrate, but at least as of lately, I don't know about the contract, I would go back and Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the second question I had, which was kind of related to the previous one a bit, um, given what I understand of Neutron in the Icehouse Juno timeframe, there's a pretty different uh, network security feature set between Nova Network and Neutron, like thing uh, IP address spoofing, port uh, MAC address spoofing. Um, did you put any mitigations in place to prevent that? Because I believe the stock neutron stuff allows allows just anybody to spoof at that point. Yeah, so we did previous to this. Um, I'd done a lot of work to help with that because I mean I know one thing in particular that you're talking about is is the ARP spoofing and stuff like that. And so we basically kind of had to pretend that we had to do fake layer two protection at layer three um, and some stuff like that. And so we've been able to mitigate it. I wouldn't say it's certainly fixed, uh, but yes, you're absolutely right that that, that that's that's. But you're mitigating it up at the L3 level, not at the kind yeah, of so basically what happens is you can poison bridge level where like if you're if you've got two VMs on the same host, one could per spoof the other's address or well there, there so there's layer two protections because it's all it's all it's all VLAN segregated, so you can't like if there's two within the same project VLAN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so a tenant can do, but because we have per tenant VLANs and there's nothing shared, um, we felt like you can still so what can happen is you can still spoof. So like VM1 can still spoof VM2, but then we've stopped it at layer three so it won't come back. So like yeah. you can't actually steal any information out of it. We felt okay with it because um, it's only a tenant. And if there's a compromise in the tenant, then I mean, that's a different problem to solve anyway. But. Well, and then on that same topic, any uh, major issues with security groups m moving over between? No. Okay, like we just shove them in the database and, and start the layer two agent, which creates all of the proper IP tables, rules, and everything works. Great. Thank you. All right. We're about out of time, so this will be the last question. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I was just going to add that um, we're kind of still stuck on Nova Network and Kielo because we use it in multi-host mode and DVR look like network witchcraft. <laughs> and You're not we, wrong. Like, we have like a couple hundred tenants in some of our clusters and we weren't confident that it would scale to, um, you know, 200 neutron routers on every single compute node um, across hundreds of compute You're nodes. You're probably right. Like, you know, M times N kind of disaster waiting to happen. So... Um, I just wanted to add that to the discussion. No. That, that really complicated things a lot for us, and we're probably looking at like a greenfield kind of rebuild to get to Neutron. Right, which kind of goes back to what Chet was saying. Like, at the end of the day, you got to look at your scenario, and that was why I started out by saying, you know, you got to look at what your, your start is and what your end is and figure out how you can do it and if you even should do it. Um, this isn't necessarily for everyone, but this is what we did, and I think it's a pretty, a pretty sane path, so... I appreciate the comment. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Enjoy your summit. Now that the most important session's out of the way, you can get drinking.